Hello and welcome to Bogosity! In these videos I will be looking at all sorts of bogus claims and hopefully make the world a little more skeptical, a little smarter, and a little less prone to frauds, scams, and sloppy thinking. In this first episode I will be looking at astrology. Despite how many people actually believe it, astrology is nothing but Bogosity. Astrology is the completely bogus idea that the positions of the stars and planets relative to Earth at the time of your birth somehow has something to do with what kind of person you are and how your daily life will go. Yeah, right! Astrology purports to be able to tell someone's personality or fortune, give advice for the future, and even diagnose medical problems. It sounds amazing, but really, the only amazing thing is how many people actually believe it? Sometimes it seems as if we're inundated by astrology. Almost every newspaper publishes a daily horoscope. Okay, most of them put them in the entertainment section, or along with the comics, but how many papers have even a weekly column on science or astronomy? We have astrologers on talk shows telling us what to do. And even a former first lady used an astrologer to help schedule her husband's affairs. We're talking the president here! And if you have a MySpace profile, your zodiac sign is listed right there in your details, whether you want it or not. So what is astrology all about? Well, it all has to do with the position of the sun, moon, and planets in relation to the stars. It actually starts out with some pretty sound astronomy. In the solar system, the sun, moon, and planets lie on or near something called the ecliptic. That's also called the solar plane. So when we look up into the sky, we see the sun, moon, and planets as lining up along this plane, circling the entire Earth. If you look all around the sky on this line, you'll see certain constellations that lie along it. These are known as the zodiac. Traditionally, there have been 12 constellations associated with the zodiac, which are known as the 12 houses, or signs. Astrologers attach a certain significance to these signs whenever the sun, moon, or planets become associated with them. Usually that means something called conjunction. The planet appears inside, along with, or roughly in front of the sign, or another planet, or whatever else the astrologer thinks is significant. Another meaningful relationship, according to the astrologers, is opposition, where the two are opposites, 180 degrees to one another. Other meaningful relationships might be 90 degrees or 60 or 30. But the most famous of all of them is the conjunction of the sun with the sign of the zodiac, known as the sun sign. For example, if you're like me and you were born on July 31st, your sun sign is Leo, because on that day of the year, the sun is in conjunction with the constellation of Leo, the lion. So I might decide to go to yahoo.com and see what today's horoscope holds in store for me. And I see... Everyone makes mistakes, and you should keep that in mind when someone who once wronged you reappears on the scene. You can choose to hold on to a grudge, or you can choose to let go of the past and give this person one more chance. Put yourself in his or her place, and be willing to listen to what he or she has to say. You'd be wise to be a bit cautious with this person, but the stars say that forgiveness is a wise course now. Well... Okay, I guess. It's kind of vague. It really only makes one prediction, that someone who wronged me will show up. But what does it even mean, someone who wronged me? It's vague enough that it could apply to almost anyone, even family, friends, or co-workers. Most of them at some point are bound to have done something I didn't like. And it's advice to forgive them, well, that's pretty good advice for anyone at any time. Hmm. Maybe I want to take a look a bit further. So now I look at the newspaper, say, the Charlotte Observer. Same sign, same day. Acquiesce. Not because you care. Do it because you must. It's good manners, and it's good for your spiritual growth. Well, that's also pretty vague advice. And it may not even be good advice. Some things you really do not want to give into. But did you notice? 
The other horoscope didn't say to acquiesce. In fact, it said you'd be wise to be a bit cautious. That's not acquiescing. Why do so many horoscopes end up being contradictory? If I pull up an astronomy program and I ask it where in the sky Mars, say, will be on a particular date and time, and then I go to a different astronomy program and I ask it the same thing, I'll get exactly the same answer. And if there were anything to astrology, we'd expect the same thing. But as vague as they are, they're completely contradictory. So why do we get different results, and why are they worded so vaguely to begin with? Uh, James Randi, stage magician and founder of the James Randi Educational Foundation, says the answer is simple. They're worded so they can appear to apply equally well to anyone at any time, and he easily demonstrates this. They were told it was drawn up by a professional based on information they had supplied about when and where they were born. Actually, these horoscopes were not quite what they appeared to be. I'd like you to share something with me, if you'd be so kind, just with a show of... I asked the students to grade them for accuracy on a scale of one to five, five being the most accurate. Uh, how many gave it a one? Let's see a show of hands. Two? Three? Four? And five? Okay. So we scored pretty highly with this, then. Let's do a little experiment. You've got your horoscopes right in front of you. Take them in your hand like this and hand them over your shoulder to the person behind you. Okay, everybody? And the guy at the end down there, you'll have to come up to the front because these people in the front don't have one now. Okay? Everybody change them around. Everybody's got a horoscope. Open up somebody else's horoscope and read it carefully, please. Oh, God! You're the same. What a surprise! <laughs> they had all received the same horoscope. Yep, give the same horoscope to different people, and they all see it as valid. Bogus! This test clearly demonstrates that, if you word something vaguely enough, people will make the match in their own minds, and you can never fail to be right. I recently saw a video made by James Randi but not everyone agrees with Randy's test. James Young doesn't, but then he wouldn't. He's an astrologer. Hmm. Hello, I'm James Young and I am an astrologer. See? I submit that the method used here was far from scientific. Let's say instead of testing astrology, we'll test uh, the medical profession. So we get together a bunch of people in a room, and in another room we have a doctor. A fake doctor. And then one by one we wheel people in for a medical examination. A few days later we bring those people back and we give them a medical report that's allegedly typed up by this doctor. Of course it's a fake report and it's the same report for everyone. Now what do you think would happen? Well I think he'd be caught out in a minute. If I'm reading all about my headaches and I don't have any headaches I know it's wrong. If I'm worried about my twisted ankle, and there's nothing in there about my twisted ankle, I'll know the report obviously isn't for me. You'd think it would be the same for astrological readings, but it isn't. But that doesn't worry Young. If anyone did find that this medical report didn't seem to apply to them, would they actually be prepared to put their hand up and say so? Or would they feel too embarrassed? Why should they be embarrassed? It wouldn't be their fault if it's wrong. The only one who should be embarrassed is the astrologer who wrote it. And look at their faces. These students are all surprised that it's not specifically for them. They're laughing about it. If it were wrong to them and they were just too embarrassed to say, why the surprise? But hey, if that test isn't good enough for you, how about this one? <laughs> 